Good morning. And welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of LeClaire, and to those in Clinton and throughout the internet land who are joining us today. I have a couple of announcements, but first well, let's start by remembering who we are. We are those who claim Jesus as Christ, and whose we are. We are God's beloved. And here is our church mission statement. The mission of the First Presbyterian Church of LeClaire is to continue to be a warm and welcoming church that actively shows the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For announcements, uh, members, you received a ballot by email or by U.S. Post, post Office, and it shows five people to vote for elders. And indeed, we are looking for five people. We had um, four people leave. We have two people on session yet, and we can have as many as seven. And these are all uh, well healed. Uh, experienced people who will add a lot to our session and uh, the same with the endowment we need two people on endowment and you'll that's what you'll see on the bulletin and we're asking that you complete it and get it back to the church by December 4th 14th December 14th that was a little slip there and then um, our angel tree gifts are due next Sunday or next Monday, either the 13th or the 14th. Um, someone will be at the church office between 9 and 11 on Monday, so that was a, that's usually a good time to bring anything to the church. I know that several are asking for prayers. I lift up Gary Martin and uh, Marilee Hendricks. And I lift up those who have lost family and friends from COVID and complications. This week, Dwayne and I lost two classmates and a dear friend from Oklahoma. So please um, take care of yourself. Wear those masks, stay away, stay home, wash your hands, get enough sleep and eat well. I think we will have a moment of silence now as we prepare our hearts for worship. We lift our praise to you, O oh Lord. Thank you. 
Advent as a journey, not exactly a trip to a different place. Rather, we are on a spiritual journey. To be refreshed, restored, and ready for Christmas, for Emmanuel's birth. For Jesus and for all that his birth, life, death, and resurrection means. The Advent wreath is a circle with no beginning and no end. It is the symbol of God's unending love and faithfulness. Its light reminds us of Jesus, the light of the world. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Once we were in darkness, but now in the Lord we are light. Live as children of light. If we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. We are all children of light, and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. O Jesus, light of the world, and Prince of Peace, we worship you. Shine into the darkest places of our lives so that we might move into the light and joy of your love, O God. Flow through us so your spirit strengthens our hearts and transforms our actions into light and peace. Amen. Good news. Who is 
in a position to condemn. Only Christ. And Christ came to earth. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ even prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven, that we are forgiven, and be at peace. Thanks be to God. and peace. As John the Baptizer called the people to repentance, so you call us to new life in your spirit. Help us wait for your promised coming with faithful listening to your word. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, selected verses from the Message Translation. During Elizabeth's six months of pregnancy, we might remember Elizabeth is married to Zachariah and they are related to Mary. During Elizabeth's six months of pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin girl who lived in Nazareth, a town in Galilee. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, the Lord is with you. You are very special to God. But Mary was con very confused about what the angel said. She wondered, what does this mean? The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, because God is very pleased with you. Listen, you will become pregnant and have a baby boy. You will name him Jesus. He will be great. People will call him the Son of the Most High God, and the Lord God will make him king like his ancestor David. 
He will rule over the people of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, How can this happen? I am still a virgin. The angel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High God will cover you. The baby will be holy and will be called the Son of God. There is something else. Your relative Elizabeth is pregnant. She is very old, but she is going to have a son. Everyone thought she could not have a baby, but she has been pregnant, pregnant now for six months. Yes, God can do anything. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let this thing you have said happen to me. Then the angel went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So last Monday, I decided it was time for me to purchase my angel tree gift. We have these little angels cut out of cardboard with a number, and then it tells the sex of the child, the age of the child, and some gift ideas. So I decided I would take my angel and uh, go shopping. And then someone asked me to shop for them as well, so I had two angels. And I said, that wouldn't be any problem. Two purchases, one trip. So I looked at the angels and got some ideas in my head about what to buy. And then I put the angels in my purse and left. Drove to the store, parked the car, and went into the store, and forgot my mask. Went back to the car, got my mask, returned to the store. In the store, I looked for those two angels and found one. But wait, I'm supposed to have two angels. So I started rooting through my purse, pulling things out that I hadn't seen in years, putting them in my pockets and in the shopping carts until my purse was empty. No luck. No second angel. So I put everything back in my purse, went back to the car. Looked all over the front and back seats, could not find them. So I decided to go back to the store with my fingers crossed that I would remember enough to buy the right presents for that lost angel. And through this ordeal, one continuous phrase kept going through my mind. Melody, you are so careless. You're so thoughtless. You need to pay attention. You're wasting time. How could you do such a dumb thing? You are very responsible. Well, I guess it wasn't just one thing. It was a lot of things, but one main thought, that I was, wasn't a very good person because I had misplaced a simple piece of paper, something that could easily be replaced. I certainly wasn't very kind or very generous to myself, was I? Has anything like this ever happened to you? When something didn't go according to your plan, so you verbally assaulted yourself for minutes and sometimes hours? When I returned to my office later that day with the gifts, I found the missing angel right there on my desk. And I discovered I had rightly remembered and bought the right gifts. But did I forgive myself? No. Instead, I had this thought, why are you so hard on yourself? That's right, instead of forgiving and forgetting, I was scolding myself again. Whew, that can be exhausting. Thankfully, my next task was to look at today's scripture. In this scripture that I just read, I heard a specific message for me and for you. Listen again. God sent the angel Gabriel to the virgin girl. Her name was Mary. The angel said to her, greetings, the Lord is with you. You are very special to God. And Mary was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary, because God is very pleased with you. Now, did you catch that? God is very pleased with Mary, and Mary hasn't agreed to anything yet. She's just there. I, I have to admit, I always thought God was well pleased with Mary because she said she would be pregnant and carry this baby. And because God knew the end of the story. You know, 
that God knew that in the end, Mary would be thrilled to be an unwed teenage girl in the Middle East in a time and place where there was a lot of religious and civil unrest. But you know, actually, God could not be sure because we humans have free will. We can say yes, and as you know, we can say no to God. If we look closely, I think God is telling Mary she is special, even beloved, if you will, only because she is God's child. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh, perhaps Mary is the good-mannered, meek, and quiet girl who always does what is expected. Or maybe Mary is a little bit loud, a little forgetful, a little rebellious and stubborn, often doing the unexpected. Because quite honestly, I think it's that second set of characteristics, characteristics that would help Mary get through the pregnancy and all that life will throw at her. In honesty, we don't know what words describe Mary, but we, because we just don't know much about Mary. But we do know some about God. God often calls those who are on the edge, those who are out, a little out of step, those who are a little rebellious and loud, and he calls them to do his work. Just for example, Jacob, Moses, and Rahab. These three and many others were definitely more sinner than saint, yet they were faithful to who they were created to be. And they were faithful to God, doing God's work when even doing God's work, even when they weren't sure what God exactly wanted or what it meant to be doing God's work or how that would look. God loved and empowered these three on the screen, plus Mary and countless others. Every single person, each of us, is God's creation, created in love uniquely made to be one of a kind. Yes, you, you and me, we are created in God's love to be our unique individual selves. There is no one exactly like any of us. And while that can make us happy that we won't have two troublemakers in our life, it can also be sad that we don't know somebody as wonderful as our spouse, two of them. There's one of each of us. Thankfully, for most of us, God calls us to do a specific plan that God has long laid out for us. And we can be thankful, most of us, that that is not, the plan is not to have a baby. Just like Mary had a baby, God is not going to call most of us to have a baby. But you know, he does call the young and the old or the more experienced to have babies. Women like Abraham's wife, Sarah, or Mary's aunt, Elizabeth, who were well experienced in life and were still called to have a baby. So God's call for us might be simple or it might be complicated. It might be a short commitment or a long commitment. Let's keep our eyes and ears and hearts and minds open because God has called and will call again. God is even well pleased with me, even when I forget my mask in the car and have to go back for it, even when I misplace a cardboard angel. So this is not to scold myself about scolding and verbally assaulting myself. No, this is a gentle reminder to me and to you to love ourselves and to forgive ourselves Forgive ourselves generously and repeatedly with love because we are God's people and God is well pleased with us. This Sunday we lit the second candle of Advent, the candle for peace. Every Sunday we pass the peace of Christ, usually after we hear the good news. That is, in Christ we are forgiven. In Christ our brokenness is healed and our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. And upon hearing that good news, when we take a moment to really realize the amazing forgiveness deep within us, 
we will be filled with the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ that passes all understanding, the deep peace, deep in our souls that calms us and fills us. Because, that, because in that moment we remember, ah, yes, I am God's beloved. God loves me and is well pleased with me. Certainly that is what Mary must have thought because later at Elizabeth's house, Mary says or sings these amazing words about her unborn baby. I am bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose name, very name is holy set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses and pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down, on a ban sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled on mercies, piled them on high. That's exactly what God promised in beginning with Abraham and right up to now. This, this, this joyful song is the deep peace of Christ that filled Mary. It is a deep peace which let Mary fully be who she was created to be. This is what God in Christ promises for each of us, a deep peace. So, O oh God, let us be willing. Let us be gentle and generous. The angel reminded Mary that nothing is impossible with God. Mary did not respond by calling herself stupid, irresponsible, or careless. No, Mary listened when the angel said, God is well pleased with you. So let us remember that, for those words are also for us. God is well pleased with you. And let us respond as Mary did. I am the Lord's servant. May God's will be done. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
friends, friends. It's time for communion. This will be the time to get your juice or wine and bread ready. Let us pray. You are holy, O God of Majesty, and blessed is the Son. Your blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent him into the world to satisfy the longings of your people for a Savior, to bring freedom to the captives of sin, and to establish justice for the oppressed. He came among one of He came among us as one of us, taking the pain of the poor and sharing human suffering. We rejoice that in his death and rising again, you set before us the sure promise of new life, the certain hope of a heavenly home, where we will sit at the table with Christ, our host. Therefore, we proclaim our faith as signed and sealed in this sacrament. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Lord our God, send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints from every time and place be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Amen. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table. And all who are present online or in this sanctuary are welcome to take communion with us. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. He said, this bread is a symbol. It is like my body, which will be broken for you. Take, eat. And as was their custom at the end of the meal, he took the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks for it, he blessed it, and he poured it. He said, this is now the new covenant, the covenant of shed blood, my blood shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. From now on, whenever you eat this bread and drink this juice, do it in memory of me until I come again. Here now are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Let's take the wafer first, the bread of Christ, the body of Christ for you. And now, the juice or the wine, the blood of Christ shed for you, for one, for all. And let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this gift of bread and juice that are symbols of your sacrifice, O Christ. We thank you for that we could share this with our friends and our family and with Christians from every time and place. Strengthen us, O God, in the power of your spirit to bring the good news to the poor, to lift blind eyes to sight, to loosen the chains that bind and claim your blessing on all people. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes again in the final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. 
O radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, sun of justice. Come shine on those who lie in darkness and in the shadow of death. Come, Lord Jesus, O ruler of the nations, monarch for whom the people long. You are the cornerstone uniting all humanity. Come, save us all, who you formed out of clay. Come, Lord Jesus, God of grace, ever faithful to your promises. The earth rejoices in hope of our Savior's coming and look forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts to receive him when he comes, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hear us now, O God, as we pray for our friends and family, our members and friends in nursing homes, all veterans, servicemen and women, and their families, all who have been sentenced to life without parole, all fire, law enforcement, and EMS personnel. We pray for June L., Pat and Jim Collins, Kate Hale, Phyllis Deering, Jesse Boardman, Sandy Miller, Tom Bloomingdale, Donna Luckman, Sue and Steve Rogers. We pray for Jan and Kirk Barkall, Sally Hackett, Gary Martin, Marilee Hendricks, Elsie Chamberlain, Paul Glispy, Bryce Boyd, Ken Stinson, Betty Penry's daughter Amy, Wesson Joyce's daughter Anna, Marilyn's son Brad, Marilyn's daughter Kenny, Jan and Kirk's daughter Amber, Kirk's friend Jeff, Chris and Colleen's aunt, Joan Tabor, Debbie Smith's brother, Sally Hackett's granddaughter, Holly, Tom, Carrie Long, Randy Goslin, Pastor Melody's friend, Myrna, on the death of her husband, Chris, Dwayne's uncle and aunt, Faye and Donna, and Mission Starfish, Haiti. And now let us pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to someone. And hear now the benediction. 
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his holy name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. May the light of the Advent wreath and the good news of the gospel go with you today and every day as you are up and as you go out into the world. And now, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with your family, and be with those who have no family. Amen.